is this honest? How can he praise uh, this honest man, a cheater? So this is one of the gospel where we should really understand which context this was written. The time it was written. During their time, masters or owners of the land hire tax collectors. And these tax collectors will go to the debtors of the of the rich men, of, 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 of rich men, and then they will collect as much as they want to over the price of the debts of those people. And what they get above those will go to their own pocket. So that's why in Jewish culture they hate the tax collectors. Because they are really corrupt. Because they get their money out of their hard-earned money. So that's the context of the story. But what can we learn from the story? I would like to highlight five lessons we can really learn well from this story. First, from the point of view of the master, you must be firm. We must be firm. When there, when there is corruption, we should stand against it. We should speak against it. When there is injustices, we cannot remain silent in the time of corruption and injustices. We should stand firm in our principles and what is right. That's what the Master did. And I think that's what our God wants us also to imitate. We cannot just remain silent in times of corruptions, injustices, in, in, in different groups as well. They cannot just, you know, let go of some of the members' um, corrupt mentality or corrupt actions inside the group because he is talented, because he is honorable, because he has titles. No! You should not just let go of that. But you should always stand for the principles of the, of the group, for what is right. Be firm. The second lesson here is very obvious. You must be honest. You cannot hide anything from your father. Yes, this time, in our earthly time, you can hide from him. But eventually, God will look at you. God will find your dishonesties, your, your skeletons in your closet. Sabi nga nila, honesty is the best policy. You can hide from Him for now, but you cannot hide from Him all the time. No. God will find you. Justice will find you. So you better be honest. Said third. What's the first one? Be firm. Number two. Honest. Honest. Number three. Be wise. Be wise with what you have. You received all of what you have from God and use it wisely. <coughs> Do not just squander it. Do not just waste your time. Do not just waste your energy. Do not just waste your talent. You have so much, you have received so much from God. Be wise, use it wisely. Do not just keep it, just like the story also of the, of the talents. You cannot just bury them. Be wise, I know many of you here are businessmen. You know how to risk what you have to get something more from what you already have. That is being wise. Use wisely your talents, your treasure, and your time. They are given to you for that reason. Number, number four, be generous. Use what you have to earn as much friends, as much people as you could. Our gospel tells us that he commended the, the dishonest steward for making friends out of his wealth. That man was able to pursue his beautiful future using the wealth of the rich man. You know, businessmen know how to risk. Businessmen even study and you know work so hard to pursue a better future. But what is better future than heaven? If you want to pursue really the true future for the true future, then do as best as the best you could to gain heaven. It is so easy to gain heaven. Eight friends. Because in heaven, no one is isolated. In heaven, no one is alone. And 
And so if you want to practice heaven here on earth, be surrounded by people. Choose to be kind to them. Be generous. Be a blessing. Yes, we are all blessed by God, but be a blessing to those people. Be a person who will, you know, who will give light to people who are in darkness. Be a person who can inspire people who are alone and lonely, who are lonely. Be a person who motivates people who have already given up living life. Be that kind of person. Be a generous person. That's how we build heaven, heaven on earth. And lastly, be faithful. Because at the end of the day, God will find us. At the end of the day, God will ask us of how we have been building our relationship with Him. Entrust your plans, your purpose, and your dreams to God and not to yourself alone. Because sometimes we are very corrupt as well to ourselves. Sometimes we are the worst friends of ourselves. Sometimes we judge ourselves too much. We do not believe in our capacities. That's why we need to be faithful to this God who believes in us. Because sometimes we are our worst enemies. So if you are self-centered and you only believe in yourself, at the end of the day, you might give up. But if you entrust your future your present and your past to God, you are assured of heaven. You are assured of His promise of true joy, not just happiness, but true joy. Because that is what we earn when we are faithful. Those are the five lessons I think we can learn from this very beautiful gospel. First, be firm. Stand for justice. Number two, be honest. Number three, be wise. Number four, be generous. And number five, may we all really find each other in God's kingdom as we continue to build His kingdom here.